Well, hello there. Welcome to the Healing Rainbow Podcast. My name is Lori the Warrior, and in a few moments, I will be joined by my co-host and soul sister, Michelle Rainbow. This podcast is not like many others. (laughs) We decided one day, well, having a conversation, Michelle and I, that we should record what we were talking about. And just maybe others out there would find it interesting and perhaps find some inspiration in it. You see, we talk about anything and everything. We mostly discuss things of the spiritual nature. For example, in this episode, we discuss the various levels and layers and dimensions of the soul. You'll hear in my voice a number of times, I'm sure, that I am quite taken aback and left pondering. And I still am, admittedly. It's a few hours after we recorded this podcast and, well, I'm still thinking about it. And we'll be thinking about it for days. In fact, it sent me on a bit of a new journey or a new direction, if you will. And that is what we aim to do, is to give you some food for thought and hope that you'll join in as we discuss our spiritual journeys. With that being said, if you have any questions or would like to share anything with us, we can be reached at thehealingrainbow3111 at gmail.com. Once again, that was thehealingrainbow3111 at gmail.com. That address will be in the description of this podcast, as well as links to our website, our Facebook page, and our TikTok. Now, over on TikTok, we post videos. Michelle's link to her page is listed in the description below as well, and as is mine. So, without further ado, let's jump into this episode. We're going to start off with a meditation led by Michelle. So, as she says, get comfortable where you are and enjoy. So, just get comfortable where you are. If you're laying down, sitting up. Just find comfort in that space. If you are sitting in a chair, put your feet on the floor, just feel that floor. Feel the seat, the cushions underneath you. Maybe feel the arms of the chair, feel the back of the chair. If you're laying down, feel your bed. And just feel how that bed or that chair or that floor just moves up to meet you and to support you. So I invite you to close your eyes with me and move into this space of light and love. We're going to begin together by breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale and exhale. So just continue this cycle on your own, breathing in through your nose and out through your nose this time. Just anchor yourself in your breath. And to begin to anchor yourself. To begin to balance and align yourself. You can feel your body relaxing, your mind relaxing. And take a moment and listen the hum of the universe. See if you hear a buzzing, a humming. Just listen for that energy. As everything that exists is energy. We are energy. That energy is light. Just 
But as you're listening to the hum of the universe, bring your focus to your third eye. Continue to focus on that breath as you're focusing on your third eye and listening to the hum. feeling that energy shift in your space. You're going to start feeling those electric impulses. It's coming throughout your body. That wave of energy from your breath is coming in. The heart and the core of earth. From the sun. All light around us in the universe. is how powerful we are. That we can overcome any obstacle in our life, any pain, any trauma, any heartache. We are aligning ourselves with the divine with our Creator, with ourself. Increase that power. So turning that volume on, on our stereo. When we turn up that volume, that we're turning up that electric energy that we are. We're turning up that power, the power of our light and our love. And during this, we feel all our chakras opening, our root chakra at the base of our spine. So the energies from the heart and mother earth come through your root, come up your spine in a spiral into your sacral chakra, just below your navel. Continue to spiral up into your solar plexus, your core. Continue to spiral up into your heart. The chakras open, your heart space begins to open and unlock. Just feel that portal, that light and love in your soul. Open up wide to create that bridge, that rainbow bridge to open up your higher chakras, to connect heaven and earth together. Feel your throat chakra opening, a spiral of energy. 
the way up into your third eye. Your third eye is opening. All the way up through your pineal glands. The top of your head, your crown, as that opens up. Brings in. Thought. So all your energies, your body energies, your chakras, they're all open, they're all aligning and releasing anything from this physical world that is stopping us from being our true self, being our true power that we are. Feel yourself light up. You're the brightest rainbow in the sky. Send all this energy out from you across the entire planet and across the entire universe through space and time. You are that bright electric star in the galaxy that's lighting up that entire space. And each ray of your light penetrates every dark space, every corner. Every soul within this dimension, all dimensions. It even penetrates the dark. Even the souls that have lost their connection to the light and roam the dark. It's layers and levels and dimensions of the dark. This is your true authentic power. We bring ourselves back within this space. This power stays with us, stays turned on. So we stay connected with our soul, that we follow our journey. We follow our inner compass. You have guides with you on this path. Stay open to listen, to follow. Your hands together in front of you to a, to a, your, to a prayer, your prayer hands, bring it to your heart, bring your thumb to your sternum.
clasp your fingers together. And open your hands across your chest as your fingers are still interlocking. Your hands are over your heart space. And within our body, our human body, we only have one heart. But when we align both energies of the masculine and feminine, those universal energies are creator. We have the two hearts, one half on the left and one half on the right that come together. wholeness that fulfillment that oneness that we are the light of love we bring heaven to this earth You still feel that vibration, that frequency, how intense it is. And it might be here for a while, and that's okay. That's what we want. We want to feel that power and stay connected to our inner power. Heaven, oh, beautiful souls, or I should say, you gorgeous, gorgeous souls out there. Thank you for tuning in. We missed you. We did. I can speak for both of us as well. We did. Yeah. I concur. I concur. I concur. It seems like a long time since we sat in front of these microphones. Doesn't it? Yeah. Right? It, it was just last month. I know, but it seems like last month was a long time ago. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad to be back. Oh, as am I. Yeah, we just had a Always. beautiful meditation, a mass meditation on on Tickety Talk. We did. And it was such a powerful meditation. It just, it just felt the energy just shake and move. <laughs> like I thought I was going to start having convulsions, you know, because it was so intense. Oh, yeah. And it was, it was clear that that light, as I said, was clear. And it just, you just felt it like just spread across this entire yeah. space. Yeah, it did. I can feel it. Um, it was like a, a pulse wave. Like it was like, <clears throat> yes. And when you were, when you were guiding us, um, I'm going to throw it in, into this podcast. So if it's not there already, it will be later on folks. But, um, and let us know what you feel after you do this meditation. Mm -hmm. But I definitely, you know, you were talking about the energy, the hum, the vibration. Well, you know, we always have the yes. going on in our ears. Yes. Man, mm -hmm. that got louder. And I felt that electricity throughout my body. Started at my feet and it was just like foom, all the way up. So I look forward to hearing what folks have to have to share with us about this yeah, meditation i do too and that yeah. that brings me to um one of our loyal listeners <laughs> our beautiful lovely gorgeous michelle yeah she sent me a message and she asked a question and she asked if we could ask that on our next podcast mm -hmm. and i said heck yeah <laughs> absolutely would love to yeah it's fantabulous. Yeah. So even anybody out there too, if mm -hmm. you have any questions you want us to answer, we'd be happy to answer it for you on our podcast. Yeah. 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 So here's her question. It says, how do you feel when you hear from someone saying, I'm better than that? And a question, whether it's, are you speaking from an egoistic mm -hmm. perspective, dark or an empathetic perspective? perspective from within yourself with life and light 
I'm just going to continue to read what she says. Mm -hmm. I know for me, it's the latter of the two, no expectations except for the uncertainty of boundaries that comes along. This can become a time where the ego becomes a powerful protection. Curious as to what the both of you think about this. And I have more to say, although I'm having issues commenting on the podcast itself. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think just to uh, clarify that, anyone that has a comment, please, you know, toss us an email because I yes. think the different platforms, you can comment in different ways. Yes. And I'm not sure exactly how that is. So the, the email is uh, the healing rainbow 3111 at gmail.com. Yes. And I'll, it'll be in the description below. Perfect. So I guess let's uh, answer yeah, let's Michelle's talk question. That. Let's talk about that. You know, when I first read it, uh, my first thought was, we don't know what the other person's thinking and no. that's how they said it. And it's depending on, I think, the circumstances yeah. of, of what's going on. Yeah. Because I've said that before. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying is, you know, if it was more of like, it, say, an unhealthy yeah. negative situation. Yeah. And I'm saying, no, I'm better than that. Yeah. It's because I am and we all are. Yeah. That's following our our soul. Yeah. And yes, our ego can be a powerful protection for us yes. as when we come into our human bodies, we have that internal drive of the the fight, flight, or yeah. freeze. Yeah. And that helps to keep us safe. But there comes to a point where we evolve from that yeah. because we're not our bodies. No. That we are our soul mm-hmm. driving this mm-hmm. human vessel, mm-hmm. as we mm-hmm. talked about, this this vehicle. And we have to have boundaries within our life with other people yeah. and knowing what's yeah. good for us, yeah. following our intuitive guides, following that compass, our intuition, our soul. Those messages come from higher up in the 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 realms of of light from yes. God. Yes. And we, that's what we need to tune into. But I do say, sometimes we don't ask the other person what they mean. Yeah. Because sometimes maybe we're afraid to. Because many people yeah. don't like conflict and they'll try to avoid it. Yeah. So yeah. what I say is, ask the person, you know, I'm just kind of curious, like, what did you mean yeah. when you said that? Yeah. And find out. Because... Maybe, just maybe, it's something totally different than what you perceived. Because we all have different perspectives. Yeah, Yeah, we do. And we can't read other people's minds. And usually from our perspective is we experienced something in the past. And if it was negative, Mm -hmm. and we have come come down a a similar situation with, with that energy... We're going to react how we first reacted to that experience. So I say, talk about it. Yeah. Communicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like you say, ask those questions. Personally, if I say I'm better than that, usually it comes from, as you were saying in the beginning, a place of I've done something you know, I've maybe turned out a piece of, uh, uh, of like, you know, one of these podcasts that I've edited or said something during a podcast. And I go, I'm better than that. Like, why would I, why would I say that? I know I'm better than that. Now that is, am I judging myself in that moment? Right. And going, why would I say that? I'm better than that. Right. So Again, it's context as to how it's being said in the moment that it's being said in. Now, if you're sitting in a place of judgment and saying that about someone else, right? Oh, well, I'm better than that. <laughs> that's that to me, that's very, that's ego speaking. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, you look at someone else and how they're living and you go, oh, I'm better than that. So, But usually we say I'm better than that person. Exactly. And then that's from exactly the ego. Precisely. So yeah, it, it's, it's, um, I don't know if we've answered Michelle's question, but it's, um, I think we did. She'll let us know. <laughs> she will. Um, it's, it really is, you know, context. And I guess I would like to hear more context from Michelle, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, what kind of instance was she talking about? Right. Is this coming from a, 
a self-judgmental position of, I'm better than that. Why would I have done that? Right? Mm-hmm. Or a, I'm better than that person. So, yeah. Yep. There you go. That's our thoughts. <laughs> Interesting yeah, question. It is. And it, it brings us into talking more about the layers, levels, and dimensions of yeah. our ego and our soul. Yeah. And I have to say, this is a tough one. Yeah. Because there are many layers, levels, and dimensions, mm. and it's how do you connect it all together? Because mm. there's so many pieces of this puzzle of life. Mm-hmm. So putting it all together is not easy. And because yeah. many more factors come into play too. Yeah. Um, but I do want to start from, well, what is ego? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's start from there. Mm. What is ego? Mm. I'm going to ask you first, Lord, yeah. what is ego to you? What so have you ego, learned? Yeah, ego to me, I'll give you a two-part answer. Okay. Ego first, for me, the first thing I learned about ego was that it was bad, right? It mm-hmm. was that connotation of, um, oh, that you're so egotistical, right? It's that pompous leading with ego that puffed up, you know, like I am better than everyone and everything. That was my first introduction to ego. And so to me for many years, it was ego was a very, very, very negative thing. And it's check your ego, check your ego at the door, right? Don't let it run you. And then as I started to delve in more and more into spirituality and understanding the makeup of us, I understood that the ego is is there also to protect us, right? It's there. It's kind of, it can be like the gatekeeper is how I see it. But if you let that ego run the show, <laughs> well, then that's, you know, if you let anything run the show and you don't have an equilibrium, a balance, then that's that can become negative, no matter what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So that's that's been my experience with you know with ego over the years now as you and i have discussed and you have began to share and i have delved into it further as to the layers levels and dimensions of ego now it's becoming a bit more clear but you know ego has always been for me something that i that i frown upon <laughs> and that i go oh i want to shed this and get rid of ego completely right and Again, I think for me now, it comes into integration, right? That's just, I guess that's kind of like a Cliff Notes version mm-hmm. of, of where I'm at with it at this moment. But yeah, I think there's some, um, there's some misunderstanding around ego as a whole, you know, that like you say, it's, it can be extremely negative and not always, right? It, it's like I say, it can be a protective mechanism, as well. Yeah. yeah well, Take thank it away. you, Lori. Yeah. And just for other people out there too. Yeah. I want to hear your comments of what you think mm. ego is, what you've learned. Yeah. Because I think within our society too, we are taught mm. what they want us to know. Yes. And I'm not saying what we've learned, say in psychology books, yeah. isn't accurate, but that is not the full truth of it. Yes. So from the psychology books, for instance, they talk about the ego is our personality. Yes. And within that personality, we have archetypes. Mm -hmm. So it's the archetypes we have, like personal archetypes, Mm -hmm. and there is the collective Mm. archetypes. Yeah. So when we look at personal, for instance... Mm -hmm. Some of those archetypes are from our experiences. So as we're growing up, it's who we were molded to be. Right. So some, I'll give some examples of what some archetypes could be. Mm -hmm. And some of the archetypes you can look at are negative or positive Mm -hmm. now. But within that, those archetypes are their patterns that we have learned. Mm -hmm. It's cycles. So some of our archetypes could be a victim. Mm -hmm. It could be a martyr, Mm -hmm. an addict, a teacher, Mm -hmm. a mother, a father, 
my mind just went blank. There's just, there's, there are so, so many mm -hmm. of them. And when you look at the archetypes, there is, and within those patterns, they can go together. So if say one person ha has an archetype of a victim, yeah. What, what do you think the other archetype someone's going to be? If they're a victim? What would you they? mean the, the, the opposite of victim yeah, or yeah. Um are they gonna be a rescuer? Yes, can be. Mm. Or you look at somebody who is abusive mm -hmm. and what is the opposite of that? Somebody's abusing you, what type of people do they attract? Attract. Ah, well they're gonna attract a victim. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, those are just some examples of an archetype. So if you learned mm -hmm. to be abusive or you learned to be a victim, mm -hmm. you're going to grow up and attract those people within yeah. your life because we have that energy signature that radiates uh. out from our chakras uh. because those archetypes are part of our chakras. And we'll, right. dwell, we'll delve into that too right. because that is not, mainstream yeah. information no so as i said because there's many different factors different layers that you can all pull in together and not just from psychology mm. so but we'll go back to psychology for a second so it was carl Jung. he is one of the famous psychologists mm -hmm. and he talked about and i know many of you have heard this before the shadow mm -hmm. that we all have a shadow self mm -hmm. so our shadow self is the parts of us we hide yeah and that we we don't like so what do we do with it mm. we tuck it away we push it down yeah and then what happens mm. well that shadow is going to do everything that it can to take you down to take you down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that yeah is a part of our ego as well uh -huh. See how it's coming, the layers yeah. and levels and dimensions yeah. of it? Because that shadow can go pretty, pretty far down. Yeah. And when we push that part of us down, as I said, that shadow can take us take us down from behind. Yeah. It can. Yeah. It, it takes over a person. Mm -hmm. So within the ego as well, there's the unconscious and conscious mm -hmm. part of ourselves. A lot of mm -hmm. times we are aware of our personality, what yeah. we like, what yeah. we don't like. Yeah. And then there's pieces that are unconscious mm -hmm. and that goes to part of the shadow. Mm. But when we go deeper into the dark of our ego, that's when we have really, really disconnected yeah. from our authentic self, from the light of ourself. Uh. So our ego can be, when you're talking about the egocentricity of it, yeah, yeah. it's that I, me, life revolves around me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we can see that amongst many, many people within, yes. within our life. Yeah. So it's not that it's always bad. It's sometimes it's good to go within to get to know those parts of ourself. Mm. So mm. let's move in to more of the spiritual mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of our ego. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just seeing you just staring at me like you're just so excited. Like, I am. Go, let's go. I am. Let's go. Uh, yeah, you can tell. You're reading me right because I'm like, let's do it. Let's dive in. Let's get into this one. <laughs> so we're going to talk about our lower chakras. Okay. So our lower chakras are... Our root chakra, yeah, that's at the base of our spine. Yeah, that's our physical body. Yeah, that is our safety, our protection. Mm -hmm. It's the base of fear, and you can go in mm. many layers, levels, and dimensions of that fear mm. as well. So when we're born, mm -hmm. when we're born into this earth yeah. as a human, we come into that human vessel. So that's, that's the age from 
I think it's zero to, oh, I'm forgetting the ages. Zero to seven okay. is is our root chakra, I think. And okay. then I believe our sacral seven to 14. And then our solar plexus is 14 to 21. But I could okay. be off okay. on on the ages yeah. of that because I don't necessarily always look at, at, at the ages. Yeah. Um, so again, our, our root chakra, when we come into this body, into our bodies and we're born, it's about what tribe you're born into. So you're mm-hmm. looking at your family, your family dynamics, your family patterns. Mm-hmm. And if you're born into an unhealthy family, mm-hmm. that there may have not been that attachment you received from your parents, that healthy attachment. Mm -hmm. You can start feeling that rejection, that feeling unloved, Mm -hmm. unwanted, not worthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where the basis of your growth within your chakras begins (sighs) within that because your chakras are part of the, um, your etheric body. Yeah. It is connected to our physical body. Mm -hmm. As I said, the lower chakras are our physical body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we move into our sacral chakra, and that's just below our navel. And I should go back. So our root chakra is a red color. Mm -hmm. Our sacral chakra is an orange color. And with that's our emotions. Mm -hmm. So we have the layers, levels, and dimensions of our emotions we have the positive emotions that we'll say and our negative part of our emotions too. So mm-hmm. our adverse emotions, sad, angry, mm-hmm. shame, mm-hmm. guilt, mm-hmm. and so on. Mm-hmm. So within the sacral chakra, the m- m- dominant emotion there is guilt. Uh. And move it, and I'll, I'll go back, but in our... Um, solar plexus our dominant emotion is uh shame okay so and as i said the physical the root is or the dominant is the fear mm-hmm. okay yeah so now back to the sacral as i said it is our emotions it is how we feel about ourselves which moves in to the soul it's all connected mm-hmm. so it moves into the solar plexus which is our mental our ego so again it's how we feel about ourselves so it connects back to yeah. how, did, how did you feel when you were when you were born here into that family as i said did you feel you didn't have that attachment that mm-hmm. rejection mm-hmm. so then when you move into your sacral you start feeling you start feeling that guilt Mm -hmm. and a lot of those more of those negative emotions about yourself. And then that moves into your mental self, your ego and how you feel about yourself. So there's your Mm self-confidence and your self-esteem. And that's Mm -hmm. that core within your, your body, your, so Mm -hmm. your stomach. Mm -hmm. And that's the yellow color. So mm-hmm. you can say that's like our sun. Mm-hmm. That's our our fire. So I'll go back again. So our our physical yeah. is the earth. Our sacral is water. Okay. For emotions, see with the elements. Okay. Our solar plexus is the fire. Ah. Oh. Yes. So when we talk about our ego, that's what all connects to our ego. Oh. In our lower chakras, that makes up who we are, makes up our stories, our patterns, as I said, those archetypes. So if you felt that you were abused when mm-hmm. you were younger, mm-hmm. you might become that abuser or right. you might become that that victim the or victim. the martyr. So then you're going to attract somebody uh-huh. that is going to mirror your issues. Hmm. Does that make any sense so far? Do you have any Can questions? You see it on my face? Do you have any I'm questions like, before we keep going? <laughs> I gotta take my microphone out of the holder because <laughs> there's there's so much. Oh you my know, goodness! Yeah, to share and even in our next podcast, there might be some things I miss that I'm going to go back and to bring in to explain more. Yeah, and so our our physical body, as I said, 
it's not who we are. It's no. that story yes. we were born into. So yes. our story most of the time gets written for us. Right. So what we're learning is to uncover who we truly are inside, that we're not, we're not this story of this, this, who, who we yeah. were born with our name, yeah. who our family is, right. what our, our culture is, our race, right. what our likes and dislikes are. It's really nothing to do with that no. or our, our, our personality types either. No. It's part of it because our soul experiences. So it's coming here in this physical body to experience this physical world, to mm. experience the ego. Mm. So what can happen too when we come into a physical body and what has happened, as we talked about over the centuries, is we became disconnected from our soul, right. from God, from from our true self, from yeah. even the, the feminine energy within this world too, that has been taken away in a sense. We've become mm -hmm. disconnected with that because it has been, we, ha we haven't learned that. Especially when we say we go to church. Yeah. We just talk about a God. Yes. And they put uh, a masculine persona on mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the feminine in yeah. that? You need yeah. both. Yeah. And when you're in a physical body, when you're here in the, the 3D realm, yeah. you have both of those energies. But right. in reality, there's only one energy. Yes. But we see the polarities and duality here on earth. Yeah. 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 I see your, I see your wheels <laughs> You see turning. my wheels turning? I'm just I like. I do. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just thinking, this is the thing that came to my mind was, that it's all the things that make up the soup that is us, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like you say. <laughs> What's in your soup, dude? <laughs> right? The family that we're born into and the, mm -hmm. the labels that are put upon us. We walk around, and we've talked about this, about how we all walk around with these labels on us, but that's not us. No, no. That is not us. So it, it, it just... It's our experiences. Exactly. It's not our, our identity. We identify no. with these roles, and yes. we become these roles, just like yes. we... When you've heard, we're all actors and actresses on stage. Yes. Yeah, we are. We're putting these masks on. Yes. We're putting these clothes on and we're playing those roles. Yeah. But that's not who we are. You go back to Ram Dass talking about we are nobody. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's exactly We it. are no thing. No. We aren't. No identity. That's what we want to go back to. The light, that energy, God, doesn't have an identity. Mm. Mm. So when we're in these human bodies, we forget. Mm -hmm. That's why we talk about people are asleep, yes. that they're not awakened, they're not woke, they haven't awoke yeah. to see who they truly are. And mm. sometimes it's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe they're just immersed in playing those physical self yes playing those roles yes exactly and they're playing their role very well and they I do say, right they do yes yes so even when you mm. have that you're disconnected yeah we can go down through we'll call it the, the rabbit hole mm -hmm. we can go down through those layers of the darkness mm -hmm. when i when i was talking about the ascension mm -hmm. and the enlightenment there's mm -hmm. steps mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. when you disconnect you can go down and descend into that darkness because mm -hmm. for centuries we have darkness within earth mm -hmm. within this th 3d dimension yeah yeah it's like it's intertwined right in here Yes. Right. So now where it kind of becomes confusing to me is because when you look at the yin and the yang, mm -hmm. okay? So the yin, as I said before, mm -hmm. that is the masculine energy. Mm -hmm. It is the right side of our body. Okay. It is the, the white color the, mm -hmm. the light of, of the symbol, the peace symbol, the yin and the yang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
the yin is the feminine energy, which is the dark part of that symbol. Mm -hmm. And that is, as I said, the feminine energy. And that's earth. Right. So, and then that, the, the light, the white part is the, the creator, the Godhead, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. And then the feminine energy can be called as well the heart. Right. You were talking about, you know, the mind, aligning yes. your mind and your heart together, the yes. intellect yes. and the, and the heart, the love. Yes. The knowledge, the love, the emotions, the intellects. Mm -hmm. We need to have those two aligned. Mm -hmm. But for centuries, we've just had the intellect where we're just yes. seeking knowledge. Yes. And now part of that too is because we've disconnected and because we are an extension mm -hmm. of the mind of God. Yes. So we're a thought in, in God's mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And within that, because we want to disconnect and be your own person. Yes. So we are creating our mm -hmm. own little universes. Yes. So as we are doing that, everything we see is just a projection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That it's all an illusion, that it, it's really not real. Yeah. These physical, tangible things yeah. that we see, even yeah. our body. Yeah, no feels real yeah. but it's everything is all energy yes so in reality we're trying to be gods of we're trying to be gods and create mm -hmm. our own universes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can't we, you look at what this world has created yeah it's not no. always happy no loving no it's because we disconnected. We need to have both of those energies flow through us. Mm -hmm. And we were there at one time in our life, as we talked about. Yes. Now, where it kind of comes confusing is like, well, you just said the dark is the feminine. So that's the dark forces. Yeah. No, it's not. So when I was in Peru and I partaked, partook in the ayahuasca and San Pedro ceremonies, mm -hmm. And how I've mentioned and explained this before is the San Pedro is the yang. Okay. 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 And um, the ayahuasca yeah. is the yin. Okay. Now within that, both of those energies, we need that balance of both, right? That yes. merge, the intertwining. Yes. So ayahuasca, mother earth, like there's so many names, the feminine energy, the yin. Mm-hmm. It's teaching us who we really are pushing us towards the light, right. showing you what your personality, your archetypes are, mm -hmm. how you're going, you're descending more into that dark because you're losing the, that connection. Right. So she's like our mother ah. whispering and telling us, ah. not trying to scare you, but this is what I'm trying to show you because we are connected to those demons within this world too. Cause we're, mm -hmm. those demons are within ourself as well. Mm -hmm. And so is, so is the angels. That's part of mm -hmm. our layers, levels and dimensions of our, of our soul and our ego. Cause they're all mm -hmm. one. So that soul is the yin and the yang. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, when we go further and further, the more that disconnection, we go yeah. to that, we can call it the black void. Yes. So when you go back to the Bible, it, it talks about we were, we were created in the dark and God turned on the lights yes. and there was light, he yes. said. Yes. So if you can kind of look at it that way. Okay. But within that dark, there's always that light within there. Mm -hmm. See how those mm -hmm. two come Absolutely. together? So now... When things and people, souls have become disconnected, they lose themselves. So they're losing those energies. They're mm -hmm. going into that void. And that's where the layers, levels, and dimensions of the dark, you can call it the, you can call it the hell realms. Yes. Like those darker realms with the darker yes. forces in this world because there's other dimensions. So the portals were opened up, or a portal was yeah. opened up back in Atlantis, yes. letting in these dark forces. And those dark forces put that darkness in the minds of men mm. to bring that disconnection, mm -hmm. to take away that feminine energy. And then eventually we take away kind of both of those energies. Yeah. Like they're still here and around us, yes. but we don't fully stay connected. So when we talk no. about the Kundalini, that's that. Yeah. 
or the chi, that's our life force. Right. So it's both of those energies coming through into our body and our spine, into our heart. Uh. So we, we, we don't get those energies. That's when we say, mm. someone says to you, oh, your lower chakras are blocked. Yes. Because you're not bringing that feminine energy into your, to your body. So mm. we're not bringing it in because if we've, if we've had, when we are born here on this earth, as I said, and we are born into a family where we've experienced that pain and that trauma, yeah, our root chakra becomes blocked. Huh. We're not letting the energy in. Mm. So when we go through our development in life as, as a human, we go through stages, yeah, right? When we talk about baby, yes. the child, yes. teenager, the adult, there's stages yes. within those, what we go through. And within each of those chakras that we go through, when we're blocking them, we're staying within the dark. Oh. We're not moving into the light right. part of it too and merging right. them both. So if we're always having, say, in our sacral, as I said, is our emotions. Mm -hmm. If we're always feeling more of those adverse emotions than anything, yeah, it's because we're blocked. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> I know it, it's it's a lot, so that's why I'm not even going to talk about the upper chakras Thank today. <laughs> I think this is a subject we have to stay on for a while because it does become confusing. Well, yeah, I'm like, just. Like... I remember the avatar master and shaman when I was on San Pedro. Yeah, and I was the only one that was high for 24 hours. Yeah, because we take that in in the morning. Yes, and ayahuasca you take at night. Right, and. So again, the light and the dark, right? Yeah, yeah. So I remember everybody was done, you know, everybody was going to eat and I'm still sitting there, can't even barely freaking get off my mat, <laughs> my blanket. <laughs> he had to help me up and walk me and we were talking and stuff. And yeah. and he t and I shared with him some of my experiences and what I was experiencing was of, was the light having the angels the angels were singing right and but it wasn't just the angels that were singing it was god mm -hmm. so the masculine yeah singing to the feminine mm -hmm. bringing her back home bringing these energies together it's weaving that love song okay through us yeah yeah so that's what that life for is weaving that love weaving song that through love us song. that's why Mm. We talk about, and I'm not going to go into it in this session, the whole twin flame journey really annoys me, but it's about, it's part of that twin flame journey. It's about the, when we talk about, we always want that true love. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. That our soulmate. Yes. Our, yes. Yeah. That's where it comes from because there is that unconditional divine mm -hmm. true love. Yeah. That's the merging of both of those energies. Oh. So that's a part of that ascension. All of it is. <laughs> so I was sharing him with what I was talking about. I was telling him like I was like in the Garden of Eden. I was going through like my past lives. I heard the the love song and and uh it was telling them about going to, because he knows that we were going within that that week, we were going yeah. to the, the jungle there in Peru to partake in ayahuasca. And he was sharing with me what, a little bit about the ayahuasca. And he said to me, he's like, don't be afraid on your mm. journey. Don't mm -hmm. be afraid. Mm -hmm. And I never quite understood really what he was saying. And now I get it because fear is an illusion. Yes. And if it's just part of our mother teaching us so we don't get lost, what do we need to fear? We're right. fear she's showing us her own inner demons too at the same time. So she's behind it all. Exactly. But she's, she's not, she's not those dark forces, right. not those, not the demons or anything right. like that right. or the, the dark entities Yes. or the devil. Yeah. Um, but she's behind it and showing us and trying to show us to move us towards the light. So when we see our demons, she's showing us it's nothing to be afraid of. This is part of what you created mm. and where, what your next step needs to be is. So now I understand when you're saying, don't be afraid. Oh yeah. <laughs> because I I'm still are on my head. journey and I still like, Oh, I'm scared. Well, what am I scared of? Exactly. You know, even just doing these podcasts, having the feeling that anxiety, 
yeah. going going on TikTok and you know sharing what I know. Yes. Because I don't want to share false truth to anybody. Right. I don't. Right. I want to guide people. I don't want to harm or hurt anybody. No. No. And sometimes my ego will pop in because of say a comment somebody says that yes. say laughing at us. Yes. Yes. And so then I start feeling, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Right. And I start feeling down on myself. Right. And then that part of me wants to give up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is a part a pr- of one of my, my patterns that I've learned yes. in life to, yes. to give up, yeah. to not even try. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't mm-hmm. have a high self-esteem, a high confidence. Yes. Yes. And so many people always said to me, you have such confidence. Like, where do you get mm-hmm. it from? I'm like, but I don't. Yeah. You know, this is what you're perceiving right. and I'm playing a role yes. to show that I do. Yes. But because of the fear, as I said, at the basis of everything, my reaction would be to things I'd be angry and want to fight. That yeah. was part of my defense mechanism was uh-huh. getting angry first. So they never saw the fear right. behind it. Right. Right. They just seen me like, nope, you yeah. ain't going to push me down. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. But it really wasn't. No. No, you were like a cornered animal. Mm-hmm. That's how an animal will react, mm-hmm. right? They react with fear when they're scared. They react with anger, sorry, when they're scared. Yeah. <sighs> Whew. Yeah, that's a lot, even when I say it out loud. <laughs> well, it's just like... Because it, it helps but putting it all the pieces together it when does. I can say it out loud because... When we're talking, as I mentioned to you, Lori, when you share messages, that message is for you first yes. and then to the people. So when I'm sharing these messages and connecting things, those messages are for me first yeah. and then to everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little, I'm rarely am I quiet. <laughs> and I'm just like. Well, I'm going to stop talking for a few minutes. No. So you, you talk. No, no, keep, because. <laughs> I'm just, uh, my first, my first question was like, okay, so, you know, we, we, we always say I have to find myself, right? Mm -hmm. Who am I? But really finding self is finding, finding the nothing because Mm -hmm. we are, like you say, strip it all away. Mm -hmm. We're not all of this. Mm -hmm. So it's getting back to, to the core, which is. Which is at the at the basis of it, love, right? Which is because, mm-hmm. like you say, we're a thought in God's mind. Yes, and I never, I understood it, but I didn't understand it, right? I was like, hmm, we're a thought. Well, so if I'm a thought in God's mind, then Creator created me this way, the way I am. But no, mm-hmm. environment, experience mm-hmm. created I self you also created, created that. this exactly to be se- a separate exactly. entity from God exactly from God exactly so it's it's stripping away again all of that getting to the root of it and finding first we have to find out what we're not mm-hmm. mm. yeah right it's part of our journey because we have to go back yeah. to our, our root chakra, as yes. I said, and work through that. Yes. So now I know from my dreams, having all these nightmares, yes. even if they don't make sense, I'm I'm there. Yes. So the pain when I came into this world because I didn't want to be here. No. So that's something I'm working through. Yeah. So because when I went through my chakras, I went through all the way up. Yes. And went to like I went through well, all the seven chakras. There's yes. more than that, yeah. but I think I went to the, like the thirteenth dimension. Okay. But I had to come all the way back down again. Mm-hmm. So, and I, th- I think we can go like back and forth. But right now, I believe like I'm in like I'm in my lower chakras again. Yeah. And clearing those out yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Because we we only need to clear I think like fifty percent of it to kind of to keep going. Okay. Okay. Um, but if you're already if you're on that ascension path. You need to clear more than that. Yeah. You need to be clear, I guess, probably 100%, I'm assuming. Well, that makes sense to me. Like you say, that you have to clear it. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's like you say, taking a look at at what our fears are, yeah. right? You say, when you talk about shame, when you talk about guilt, you know, as as you alluded to, we put we put ourselves out there on these platforms, and 
I'm the same as you if, if I get what I perceive as a, a negative response. Even if I don't even get anything, if I, if I think, oh, if I put this out there, I could receive a negative response, mm-hmm. I won't do it. Mm-hmm. I won't step into it because yeah. it's like, nope, don't want to feel that, right? Yeah. I'll feel that shame of like, oh, yeah, no, I shouldn't have. So it's, you know, we talk about stepping into our true authentic selves. Well, that's, now it makes sense to me completely. Like you say, fear is in the root. And fear is here to teach us something. Fear is an illusion. I never fully understood that fear is an illusion. I thought I was thinking fear is an illusion that is created by by the 3D matrix as well. But then if I look at it as what what is the predominant fear that's being fed to us right now? Mm-hmm. Right? Fear as a society, as a whole. Well, it's it's scarcity for one thing is yes, massive lack, right now, scarcity. right? Lack, scarcity. Mm-hmm. Again, judgment, all of those things. Yeah. Not belonging, that's yeah. always a huge thing. Well, <laughs> the fears that we all have are actually what bond us and bind us, right? So I'm just I, I'm after this podcast, I'm I'm gonna be <laughs> now I know what I'm obsessed with for this week. <laughs> and for the rest. <laughs> and that is just ripping apart everything <laughs> just, I know, but i'm telling you when yeah. we even when we do that there's more questions well that i keep know coming out. that's the but it's still important to ask those questions it just yeah. it does get confusing along the way yeah because i bet you next time we do a podcast something else is going to pop up that we add with what we're already talking well, yeah. about and have been talking about and like i'm okay how do we uncover this now yeah exactly how does this make sense how does it exactly. fit exactly exactly yeah I guess it just never has to make sense it doesn't i don't think it does have to make sense right and that's isn't that what we get caught up in mish is trying to find the sense yes. in it all yeah but to keep us sane i think <laughs> maybe maybe sanity isn't all it's good <laughs> you know like <laughs> sanity is an illusion yeah. uh, and you know mm. just like you yeah. said, talking about society where they're throwing the fear yeah. in our face. Yes. It's not always a bad thing. We no, it to, isn't. We need to see that. Well, because it's right here in front of yeah. us. Yeah. So right. we've been, and I keep, I'm still stuck in this Hollywood thing, okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> so just, you know, the demon worshiping, yes. um, like all those de- those rituals, mm-hmm. the, the sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? There's just so much that's going on, not just in Hollywood, but just, just in the world. Mm. Oh, when the people talk about, you know, the rent rising, the food oh, gosh, prices, yeah. right? everything. everything, all these additives that are yes. in our food. Well, yes. what can we eat? Yes. They're trying to kill us. Yes. Like yes. you name it. Yes. Almost everything that people call conspiracy theories, I guarantee they're, they're true. Oh, they are. Now, it's how do we work through that now? Yes, exactly. It's trying to uncover that fear and work through that fear yeah so you can release that fear exactly those dark forces in a sense we think they're trying to keep us trapped here Mm -hmm. so that yes yes that that could be what they want yes but also it's it's our mother behind it all saying yeah look at what can happen and where you can be yeah you know if you can't continue to you know move forward and to evolve to transform to find yourself, you know, that expansion of who you are, the infinite, we're not the finite. Exactly. The infinite. Yes. The eternal. We are. Yes. That's the thing. So right? try not to be afraid of, you know, what's going on. Like sometimes I think, oh, someone's going to come knock on my door and, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be a yeah. the devil knocking on my door and saying, hello, Michelle, <laughs> trying to get you. <laughs> Because my dreams have all been about these the, entities the saying devil. they're the yes, devil. Yes, exactly. And and demons and me yes. having to shine my light bright. Exactly. So, you know, it's it's yes. all like making sense. It is. And it's like, say, when you speak it out loud, then it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm not scared of you. Right? Exactly. Because Go ahead, knock if, at the door. If we die, well, we're not meant to live forever. No. Our souls live forever, of course. Yes. 
Yes. Not, our, not these vessels because no. this is not who we are. Exactly. Like I say, the soul is infinite. Yeah. The body is finite, right? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't continue. But this is just, this is just yes. the, the outfit that we're wearing in this reality. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, like you say, it's, yeah. <laughs> Invite the devil in for some tea and give him a kiss on the forehead and be like, welcome. <laughs> you know? like Oh, I love you, Mr. Devil. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Your horns look good today. <laughs> But it's because right. that right at the yes we can become that devil That's within exactly ourselves. It. Yeah, yeah, we can. That's the fear. Mm-hmm. Is that well? And that's the thing that I mean. Who is the greatest villain that we're that we're fed? Right, that is the devil. Yeah, that is the devil. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just makes me go, okay, so take a look at, you know, take again, take a look at what's being shoved down our throats and and laugh at it and go, I'm not afraid. Mm-hmm. Again, whatever. I know who's on my side. Exactly. I know what I am. Mm-hmm. I'm not scared. You say death is another fear that so many have, right? Mm-hmm. The fear, we also have fears of, of not... Um, reaching our potential, right? Yes, yes. Well, what if, Mish, we're just here to experience this, right? And what if, <laughs> what if it's just, you say, overcoming fear? What if that is the, the end game to all this is overcoming fear and seeing through it all and just going, Pfft. That's the unplugging of the matrix. You got it, yeah, because it no longer has power over you. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of Labyrinth. Mm. Do you remember um, what's what's her name in Labyrinth? I can just think of her real name in, in real life. I can't remember her name in there, but when she was with Jared, the Goblin King, yeah, and when she says at the end where they're going through all those, going up and down those stairs and all that maze, is that she's in yeah. that illusion, yeah, that she was sleeping, and she said, "You have no power over me." And what happened? That illusion shattered, that Poof. glass shattered, that mirror. Poof. Yeah. That's it. Bingo. Yep. You just solved it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Actually, I think it's a good part where we do end. I think it is because it, it's it's nicely wrapped up. Yeah, I think so too. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> So before I leave, I just want to say thank you to those gorgeous, gorgeous souls Mm. that are here with us. And also to thank you to our guides and guardians and our angels that are, that are of us. Yes. Of the light and love that thank you for always guiding our way. Mm. And please continue to help us to see, help us to be. Yes that love and that light yes. for other souls so mm. here we go paint a rainbow in your heart and color the worlds with love good old souls xoxo michelle and Lori. thank you for joining us for this episode if you liked it please consider leaving a five star rating on the platform of your choice by doing so it allows others to find our episodes and helps to spread the word music for this episode was brought to you by upbeat.io u-p-p-b-a-t dot i-o music for creators with no copyright issues that's upbeat.io u-p-p-b-a-t dot i-o To access the artists that were featured in this episode, you can hit the link in the description of this podcast. The Healing Rainbow Podcast is a Troll in the Jar production, a division of Honky Tonk Media.